We're going to continue looking at algebraic expressions, and today we're going to um, look at evaluating algebraic expressions. Now, to evaluate an algebraic expression, what we mean by that is we want to find out what the value is of that expression when we substitute in a particular value of x. So let's look at it, and we can see what I mean by this. If we consider our first expression here, x plus x plus x, if we want to evaluate it when x is equal to 1, all we mean there is if we replace, if we put in the value of 1 everywhere there's an x, what is the value of that expression going to be? And that's quite easy to work out. It'll be everywhere you see an x, you put a 1, and so our answer there is 3. If we wanted to evaluate it when x is minus 3, then everywhere in that expression where there was an x, you put a minus 3, and so you get minus 3 plus minus 3 plus minus 3, and you get minus 9. And here, if we evaluate it when x is equal to 10, then everywhere there was an x, you put a 10, and you get your answer. Let's have a look at a different expression. 3x, what does that mean? It means 3 times x. So what do we do when we have x equal to 1? We say 3 times 1, and we get 3. And then here we have when x is equal to minus 3, what we've got to do is take that minus 3 and multiply it by 3, and we get minus 9. And here we have to take the 10 and we multiply it by 3, and we get 30. Now, if you notice something here quickly, what we got as our answers for each of these was exactly the same. And that makes sense, because you know, if you say x plus x plus x, what you've got is you've got three x's, so it is the same as three times x. Adding something together three times is exactly the same as taking that thing and multiplying it by three. And so what we can say is that those two expressions, even though they look different, are in fact equivalent. That means that even though they look different, or might look different, they will give exactly the same answer no matter what value of x we put in. Basically, they're the same expression, just written differently. So we call these two equivalent expressions. Let's have a look at 2x plus 1 and see if that's an equivalent expression, if it's equivalent to 3x or x plus x plus x. First of all, take a moment to think for yourself before we start doing anything. Do you think that 2x plus 1 is going to be equivalent to 3x or to x plus x plus x. In other words, do you think that no matter what value of x we put in, you're going to get the same answer if you do 2x plus 1 as if you do 3x? Okay, let's check. Let's have a look at 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1 says take x, multiply it by 2, and then add 1. So when x is 1, we're going to say 2 times 1 plus 1 and we get 3. Now, that is the same answer as we got here and here, but we can't say yet that it's equivalent, because in fact, for it to be equivalent, we have to check that it's true for every single value of x. Now, of course, we can't actually do that, but at least we can try a few more to see what's going on. So here, 2 times minus 3 plus 1, you'll get minus 6 plus 1, which is minus 5. And straight away here, we can see we're getting a different answer, so it's not an equivalent expression. And here, 2 times 10 plus 1, it's going to be tw uh, 2 times 10, right? Remember our bod mass, we do the multiplication first, so it's 20 plus 1, which is 21. Not the same. So this in is 2x plus 1 is not equivalent. And you can see why right, that it's not equivalent, because in this one you take the x and you multiply it by 3, so you've got whatever x is, you're going to have 3 of them. Here, you're only going to have 2 x's, and then after that, you're just going to add 1, not 1 x, just 1 as a number. Let's have a look, why don't you have a quick look and see 2 x plus x and 3 x squared, are they equivalent expressions, are they equivalent to each other, are they equivalent to anything you've seen so far? Pause the video and try that for yourself. Now work out the values when x is 1, minus 3, and 10, and for each of those, and then tell me if they are equivalent. 
Okay, let's go over that. Here you should have got 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3. Here you will have got 2 times minus 3 plus a minus 3, which gives you minus 9. And here you'll have 2 times 10 plus 10, which gives you 30. And so you are getting exactly the same answer as you got for these two. So that, that, and that look like they are equivalent. And we can see that this is equivalent, right? Because you've got two x's and then you add on another x, it's exactly the same as having three x's. So that is equivalent. What about your 3x squared? Okay, put in x is 1, you're going to get 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. Here you put in 3 times minus 3 squared. Minus 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And here you're going to put in your 10. And you're going to get 10 squared is 100 times 3 is 300. So this is definitely not equivalent. You're getting totally different answers um, to what you got for 3x, for 2x plus x, etc. And you can see that that's fairly obvious. Why? Because what's happening here is totally different. What you're doing is you're taking x and you're squaring it. And then you're multiplying it by 3. Um, it can't possibly be the same as just taking x and multiplying it by 3. Okay, let's look at a whole lot of expressions and decide whether they are equivalent to each other. So let's have a look here at a plus b and b plus a. Remember, when we said that, when we want to say things are equivalent to, expressions are equivalent to each other, what we're saying is, even though they might look different, do, will they always give the same answer when we put in values for a and b? Always. So, let's have a look at a plus b and b plus a. Now, if you just think about it for a moment, when you're adding, it doesn't matter which way around you do it, right? Whether you say 3 plus 2 or you say 2 plus 3, it's never going to make any difference to what your actual answer is. So, these two expressions are equivalent. And we use the equal sign to say they are, in fact, equal to each other, equivalent to each other. Okay, what about 2x plus 3y and 3y plus 2x? Let's think about that for a moment. What you've got here is a 2x and here a 2x and here you've got a 3y and here's a 3y. And all you've done is you've changed the order in which you're adding them. So you've actually got the same things here and here and all you've done is you've added them in a different order. So basically, we're in exactly the same situation we were before. Is it, will it give me the same answer? Yes, it will. It doesn't matter which order you do the adding in. So those two are equivalent expressions. What about here? 2x plus 3y and 2y plus 3x. Now here we do have something funny going on because here it says when you put in a value for x, you multiply it by 2. Um, and then when you put a value of y, you multiply it by 3 and you add them together. This instruction is actually quite different because it says you take your value of y and multiply it by 2 and you take your value of x and multiply it by 3 and you get your answer. And I can tell you quite easily that's going to not be equivalent because let's just take a little quick example to see. If I, had, if I substitute in x is 1 and y is equal to 2, for example, what am I going to get here? I'm going to get 2 times 1, which is 2, and I'm going to get here 3 times 2, which is 6, and so I'll get an answer of 8. Whereas here, what I'll have is in this case, it's the y, the 2 that gets multiplied by 2, so I'll have 4, and it's the 1 that gets multiplied by 3, so I'll have 3, so I'll have 4 plus 3, which is 7. So these things aren't equivalent. It's if you change the what gets multiplied by 2 and what gets multiplied by 3, it's not going to be the same. So these things are not equivalent expressions. All right. Think about this one quickly, the last two quickly for yourself, and then we'll go over it. A minus B, B minus A, and A minus B minus B minus A. Are they equivalent expressions? Pause the video, decide on your answer, and then we'll discuss it. Okay. Hopefully, you immediately said that these two things here, let me get a pen, these two things here are not equivalent. Because it does matter the order in which you subtract, right? If you say 3 subtract 2, 
It's different to saying 2 subtract 3. If you say 3 subtract 2, for example, you get 1, whereas if you say 2 subtract 3, you change the order, you're going to get negative 1. So those two things are not equivalent. But hopefully you remembered from when you were doing your integers work, your negative numbers work, that these two things are equivalent. That if you take a number, minus A minus B, you're going to get the same answer if you swap it around, except it will be negative. And so this and this are equivalent. The last thing we're going to look at is just some conventions. Now, to explain the idea of a convention, I'm going to use an everyday example. In my cultural tradition, when you meet somebody, it is a convention that you shake hands with them and greet them. Uh, now, there isn't any real reason why you have to shake hands with somebody when you meet them. And certainly in other cultures, that might not be the convention. It might not be the way that it's normally done. But it does, a convention makes kind of things easy for people because we all know exactly what to do. You know, we know kind of what's expected of us. Meet someone, shake their hand, you know, and on you go. Um, so it's just, there's no real reason for it. It's just something that we've all decided on that just makes it kind of easier for us all to be on the same page. And so in maths, we also have some conventions like that. And in algebra in particular, because there's so many different ways you could write things, it's often quite nice to have a convention. Um, so the convention in algebra tends to be that when we write things, we choose to write the numbers first. We choose to write the letters in alphabetical order um, within a term. And we choose to put no multiplication signs in. So an expression like this there is nothing wrong with it. It's a perfectly readable algebraic expression. But it's not conventional. And so if we wanted to turn it into a conventional um, algebraic exp expression, we look at each of the little parts of it, each of the little terms, and we will sort it out according to these conventions. So here, what we need is we need to have the numbers first. So we would need to put the 5 first. And then we'd put the x, and then we'd put the y. This and this say exactly the same thing, right? This says take y, 5, and x and multiply them all together. And this says exactly the same. Take y, 5, and x and multiply them all together. It's just we've written it in the more conventional form. 5, and then x, and then y, because that's alphabetical order. And we haven't put in multiplication signs for the multiplication. And similarly for this other little bit here, Okay, the 2 is at the beginning, but we need to exclude these multiplication signs, and we need to get the W and Z into alphabetical order. So we're going to get plus 2 WZ. This and this are equivalent expressions. They tell you to do exactly the same thing. This is just written in the conventional form. So I repeat, there's nothing actually wrong with this. It's a perfectly acceptable algebraic expression, but we tend to, just so that we are all talking and reading and seeing things in a similar way, we tend to write it in this conventional way.